Welcome everybody to AI Innovators in Telecommunications, where we're helping our customers become AI driven. And I have with me today, Marco. Marco, could you please introduce yourself? Absolutely, thank you, Brian. My name is Marco Carona. I am a field CTO for GitLab. Uh, in my role, I'm specifically focused on telco customers. So my job is to align what GitLab is doing and what uh, they're doing with the uh, telco industry. And GitLab is the DevSecOps platform of choice of many companies, many uh, major companies in the world. And my job is to align what GitLab does with what Telco wants to achieve. That's beautiful. And so we really have come into a software driven world, but now it's shifted a little bit, hasn't it? It's an AI driven world and an AI driven economy. So Marco, how has that changed or what are those opportunities that you see? What's going on there? Yeah, that's, that's a switch that has been happening over time, slowly, but now it's really accelerating. The reality is both software-driven and AI-driven industries and companies and economy do actually require a lot of data points because you need those data points to understand what your customer wants to do, what are their needs, what they're going to get to. And telcos are in a very, very unique position because they're very connected with their customers through their mobile phones. They can really understand and potentially predict what their customers are looking for. So the bottom line is that telcos do really have all the capabilities that they need and all the, the requirements that they need to actually get to creating those business values for their customers. Marco, it's about creating business value. So what are the, some, of the, some of the areas that our customers in, in the communication and telecommunication space can create that value? So, there are multiple uh, areas. The, the real, real challenge that they're going to face is that uh, creating those new business models, creating those new capabilities that they can actually monetize and actually provide those value to their customers with, that comes with challenges. And the main challenge is that they need to do that at the speed that is required by the existing ecosystem. And that speed is super high. Telcos historically have not been able to actually drive those capabilities as quickly as now the industry requires. So the challenges are going to be mostly adopting that DevSecOps and that cyber ability engineering mindset that is really the enabler, enabler to actually get as quickly as required with those new business models and those new capabilities to their customers. So how are you getting them to, that, that's a shift, yep. right? DevOps, SecOps, how, how do you get them to make that shift? What are some of those key things that you're, you're enabling to make that happen? That's, uh, in all fairness, it, it's, uh, uh, it always goes down into the usual three components. It's people, processes, and technology. And uh, the challenge is that the, those requires a very new approach. So those people, uh, process, and technology needs to really change. If we look at the process standpoint, adopting those DevSecOps and Cyber Ability Engineering processes is going to be very daunting. Uh, it really requires a shift in the mindset, in the processes, in the way you actually implement things. Most importantly, adopting a value stream management approach, which allows you to collect the data points on how really long it takes to actually deliver a capability or value to your customers, and then understanding what are the bottlenecks and potentially trying to, uh, to identify optimization plans around that, that's going to take some time. It's a very, very important shift in the mindset. Now, from a tooling perspective, you really need to start having tools that give you that agile capability, that capability to very quickly deploy, build uh, whatever you need at the speed that you need, but also the capability to have a tool that provides that visibility of what is the end-to-end, -end, what does it look like, how does it take from ideation to operationalization of a new capability. So that's, And you fail fast too. Yes, and you need to, to, to do that very quickly. You need to fail fast, you need to understand if, if you need to accelerate a specific capability, because actually failing is good. As quickly as you fail, the, the, the faster you fail, the, the faster you can actually restart and find new capabilities. But that is a change of mindset as well. It's an incredible failing change. Fast, saying fail fast and failing is good, not something we as humans think of how yeah. do you get that ingrained that's that, that's a good point and it's even more challenging with telcos because there are things that they cannot fail with and that's table right. stake i agree there are regulations that actually says this is a mission critical infrastructure you cannot fail there 
But at the same time, the fact that you cannot fail cannot make you move slowly because the reality is that the industry, the economy, uh, customers do actually want something which moves at a faster pace. So the bottom line is having tools that allow you to fail fast where you can, but allow you to move fast with very strict regulations, security, whatever you cannot fail, having tools that can give you those capabilities altogether, that's what is going to make the difference. So you still have the guardrails, but you're presenting the opportunity to really go at speed, at AI speed is what I would say, because it's AI has accelerated how we do business, even from a year ago. Yep. So, and the AI, the AI innovation is really pushing to the limit, the speed at which you can actually do things. And so um, if you have capabilities that will allow you to accept a suggestion from an AI or even a command from an AI of what needs to be changed, but then pushed into a pipeline that actually assures that everything is going to be changed in a secure way and in a compliant way, that's how you get the best of the two worlds. But the bottom line is you really need to have that kind of capability that allows you to abstract all of those information that come in, all of those commands that come in, all of those intents of reconfiguration of new capabilities that you want to deploy that come into the platform and then push it through the pipeline that will assure you that if it's a mission critical component, it's definitely not going to fail. If it's not a mission critical component, it can fail fast. So Marco, when we think about this, I mean, it's a vast space in telecommunications. Where should our customers start? So th this is what we, we are seeing here at GitLab. Usually, uh, the digital team is the one that is the more willing to actually embrace these new methodologies for the simple reason that they can fail. That's very easy. Uh, the network team is the one that usually is a little bit slower on the adoption for the simple reason that they cannot fail. And rightfully so, because if the network team fails, what is going to happen is that probably you're going to have an outage and people are going to be upset because they cannot use their phone. But most importantly, public sector is going to be upset because if there's a security notification that needs to be sent out, they're not going to be able to do that. That's a huge problem. So the network team rightfully so is the slower one. But again, um, the fact that you move fast doesn't mean that you need to fail fast. You can still create those guardrails and those are the kind of processes and tools that will allow you to do that. Now, the most important thing for me is also to think about the people side, because when you have the digital team, which is willing to fail fast, potentially, because even on the digital side, that willingness to fail fast is kind of a challenge because the telco mindset is still there. Um, but uh, even when you have those kind, that kind of mindset where you can fail fast, the reality is that starting to actually push in that direction becomes very challenging. But the only way you can start pushing into that direction is to put people in a position into that kind of psychological safety where they can understand that they can build things, they can test those things very quickly, and they can have a very quick output from the tooling set that they are using if something is really going to work or not. Then they operationalize it, they understand if it's profitable and if it's interesting for the customer, and then decide whether to decommission it or not. Uh, from a networking standpoint, same thing just with a little bit more guard rays. But the reality is that if we can push the time that is required to make a change from six months through six weeks, for example, that's already a huge advantage, even on the networking side. Well, and on the network side, it's all about the autonomous network operations and what's happening there, because it does have those guardrails. And what I'm starting to think about too is how do Google Cloud and your company partner how do we come together to make one plus one equals three for our customers? So that's, um, that's a very, very interesting uh, question. Uh, let me step a little bit backward. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to be game changing for telcos from a profitability and monetization standpoint is the capability to start onboarding B2B2X APIs to a marketplace so that they can resell that capability, those capabilities to their customers. Now, the challenge with that is that all of a sudden, the telecom infrastructure will need to be shared across all of these APIs, which potentially come from third parties as well, uh, which basically means that everything needs to change. The way you develop, the way you test, the way you onboard, the way you check your software supply chain, the way you operationalize. 
that change requires a shift in the mindset of people, a shift in the, in the processes. So where, in my humble opinion, companies like GitLab and Google can really help and really can shine there is to help customers, not just from a tooling tool set and, tool, and tooling standpoint, because GitLab and um, Google tools are made to be agile, but also from a processes standpoint. Those kind of DesicOps and SRE mindset are ingrained in those two companies, in the GitLab and Google That's companies. Right. And we can help customers do actually adopt the same kind of mindset. So I think from an a, from a operationalization standpoint of this more agile world, this capability to potentially onboard third parties, to potentially resell third parties, to have this shared infrastructure that is provided across different vendors and different consumers, that's where GitLab and Google can really help the, uh, the Tucker Reeves tool. So really moving uh, dev and SecOps at AI speed is the goal here. Well, DevSecOps on one side, site reliability engineering on the other side. Because let's keep in mind the end-to-end -end is made by two components. The, the component where you build something, but most importantly also the component where you operationalize that something. And so... Those two kind of mindset, DevSecOps and Cyber Ability Engineering, it's where GitLab and Google can really help the customers work. Well, we're really excited about the partnership. We're excited about what you're bringing to the industry and appreciate you being here, Marco. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being here and thank you for having me. And that's it for now for AI innovators in telecommunications. Mm -hmm.